Well, I think one of the deadly combos is sexual shame and being afraid of, you know, people knowing what's going on with them sexually or what has happened to them sexually. That's a big one, especially for Christians, um, because we present ourselves in church services, you know, as, as be having certain things together. But the reality is a lot of people have issues in that area. They don't want people to know. Uh, they don't want people to know the bondages that they may be presently experiencing or have experienced in the past. And so there's fear and then there's shame and it's, it's deadly. It's like a part of them is in the dark. Welcome to the Prophetic Spiritual Warfare Podcast with host Kathy DeGraw. In this teaching, learn how to receive and release the ministry of deliverance and conquer spiritual warfare led by the Holy Spirit. Kathy is passionate about exposing the enemy and assisting people to conquer torment in their minds. Kathy's new book, Mind Battles, Root Out Mental Triggers to Release Peace, can be ordered wherever books are sold. Now, get ready to receive revelation, impartation, and deliverance with Kathy DeGraw. I want to welcome you back to my show. I'm really excited today. I have to say my next friend that I'm going to have on is a well-known author. You all know her. And I recently picked up her book and I was like, you guys need this. I think I need it. Um, I know some of my team was actually reading it. So I want to welcome Jennifer to the show. Welcome, Jennifer. Hey, Kathy, I'm really glad to be back. I appreciate it. This is a, a great opportunity for me. So thank you. You're welcome. And guys, I want to show you her new book, Inner Healing and Deliverance. It's actually been out for a little bit now here. And it's a handbook. Okay. Like, I think that is so important to highlight. It is a handbook. And so, Jennifer, you know, you have written tons of books. They're all phenomenal. I have a lot of your library. What makes this one stand out? Well, this was the hardest book that I ever wrote. I wasn't planning to write it the way that I wrote it. And through some circumstances that the Lord led me through, I decided to put the whole story, or I wouldn't say the whole story, because most people don't know my whole whole story. And I knew that if I put every single detail in there, I would shock everybody. So I, <laughs> I, I would say an introduction to my true story, the one that emerged when my memories returned when I was 47 years old. And so, um, you know, I decided to just go for it. Um, it took a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of counsel, a lot of therapy, a lot of prayer, um, a lot of prayer ministry, um, to actually get the words down on paper and get, and get a piece of the story out to people that I felt was, would be helpful for others. One of the unique aspects of this book is you relate shame and fear. You know, I have ministered to people for years. I was bound in fear for 40 years. And so that draws in a lot of people for fear. What element about shame and fear can you tell them that could help their breakthrough for those people that I've been ministering to and haven't been able to get released from fear yet? Well, I think one of the deadly combos is sexual shame and being afraid of, you know, people knowing what's going on with them sexually or what has happened to them sexually. That's a big one, especially for Christians, um, because we present ourselves in church services, you know, as, as be having certain things together. But the reality is a lot of people have issues in that area. They don't want people to know. Uh, they don't want people to know the bondages that they may be presently experiencing or have experienced in the past. And so there's fear and then there's shame and it's, it's deadly. It's like a part of them is in the dark and that part of them needs to come to the light in a very safe, safe space and in a way where they can actually get healed from that kind of trauma, um, compulsion, whatever it may be. I agree with that. You know, I have done thousands of ministry, uh, deliverance ministry, one-on-one -on -one sessions over the course of the years. No guys don't call me. I'm not doing them now, but 
You know, I found probably about 80% of Christians have been sexually abused and traumatized and only about 50% remember it. The other 50% don't even have that memory. And so Mm -hmm. I think that shame and that fear really correlate there. What can you say to that person who's like, you know, I can't quite put a finger on all my memories. I think maybe something happened or I think maybe I'm traumatized. How can you help them pull that out? Well, I personally don't think it's necessary to remember every single detail. Correct. Um, What we want to look for is we want to look for fruit. Um, If the fruit is there, then you can kind of figure out the root. And, And that's okay. And I also counsel people that it's okay to take it slow because, um, you know, science will tell you this, that where there's trauma, especially deep level trauma, um, there's brain damage. Now your brain can be healed, but you have to go through a slow process of working through, you know, the the memory or whatever you can, uh, what it did to you emotionally, what it's doing to you spiritually. Um, you know, because you are, uh, you know, spirit, soul, and body, even what it's doing to you physiologically, because it's all connected. And it's amazing when you begin to heal the things that lift off of you out of your body, out of your physiology, Mm -hmm. out of your, you know, out of your brain. Okay. And yes, of course, the doors of, of, um, uh, demonic oppression will shut as well. I think that's very well stated. I love what she said. You know, we don't have to relive it. We don't have to experience it. And so when I say, what can we do to root that out of us or expose it? I think one of the most critical things is, is the Holy Spirit's timing. Mm -hmm. showing you, you know, okay, because I've dealt with a lot of people that are like, I have this trauma. I, you know, I think something happened, but -hmm. what I say is if the Holy spirit quickens you to deal with it, that is the timing. And he will give you the strategy. Don't you think partnering with the Holy spirit in your healing is everything? It is necessary. It is vital because he is the healer. And that's why I always, you know, get concerned sometimes with inexperienced deliverance ministers who want to rush it, who want, who want to push it too fast, you know, because they have a goal and it looks a certain way sometimes to them and that they need to go ahead and let the process be slow or the person being ministered to needs to be comfortable enough to say, I need to take a pause. Um, I need to, I need to, I need to stop now and revisit this maybe next session and really have like an understanding that it's okay to take time when parts of you begin to heal, especially when there's complex trauma, when there's, you know, that smashing up of uh, your personality on the inside um, and you start to come back, it affects you physiologically. And so uh, my life just went off, you know, <laughs> but it affects you physiologically. Um, and, and so your, your brain chemistry, like your physiological chemistry will actually adjust. So you have mm-hmm. to, like your body has to be able to pace with your healing as, as well as everything else. And if you go too fast, you can actually collapse yourself. So, so that's something I, I just tell people all the time, take your time, let the Holy Spirit lead, be okay with it. You know, um, if there's one scene you got to work out for like a year or two, that's okay because that's the pace. You know, that's what you got to do. I love that because deliverance is a process, you know, and I would Mm -hmm. have people come and say, okay, how many sessions do I need? I'm not going to put a number (laughs) on it. Yeah. (laughs) You know, it's just like, (laughs) let the Holy Spirit work because this really has been very traumatized. And, and I know Jennifer right now, that's one of the things that, you know, my friends, followers have been really saying is how do we get Mm -hmm. healed from that, you know, deep rooted trauma? How do we really go into those soul wounds? And so when you have been so traumatized, what do you think the best three tips are to walk that out and get healed and stay healed? Well, it's, it's about, you know, making sure that you have a plan and being intentional with your plan. Um, and so plan can be like, okay, I have a Christian therapist. I have um, a prayer minister. Um, I have an accountability team or I have a friend that I can call. And, and I know for me walking through the worst of, of, you know, the healing parts for me is I had several layers of 
people that I can go to for a lot of different things. I had to do that because um, I realized I, I was in trouble. I'm like, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it through this. I better put things in place. Uh, so I put all sorts of accountability around me. Okay, so you need a healing plan. You're definitely going to need accountability and you need intentionality. Um, you know, you're going to have to press into some pain areas. I think, you know, we will, we're pain avoidant. Um, you know, so you need to get comfortable with pain and, and have an outlet for mm. pain. You can't do, you have to make decisions ahead of time what you won't do in pain. Like, I'm not going to leave my family. I'm not going to leave my church. I'm not going to leave God. I'm not going to leave my job. I mean, you literally have to put those things in place because when you go into the, the, um, the pain cyclone, right, <laughs> you will want to quit everything. All right. That's so right. You put some things in place. And then you make sure that you're talking through it. A lot of it is talking through the messy feelings that you're having, the messy ideas that you have in the in the midst of your pain. Um, you know, and just talking to it with people who are who are like they're not gonna they're not gonna judge your whole life over that. <laughs> you know, this is what I feel right now. You know, yeah, you know, this is what I feel this month. You know, and, and just, and then, and then, you know, over time you start, you start to go in the right direction. You know, everything's, uh, you know, where you point yourself towards, if you point yourself towards healing, everything's going to start catching up towards that direction with your, uh, with you being intentional. I like what you say. I always say, embrace your deliverance. And people are like, what do you mean embrace (laughs) your deliverance? It's like knowing I'm going to go through the pain. I'm going to go through the process. And if you embrace it in the forefront and you don't resist it, you're going to get through it a little bit easier, you know, than kicking and screaming. No, I don't want this. And you know that, Yeah, you know, and that accountability. I love the story of the paralytic in the Bible. You know, his buddies peeled the roof off. You know, they lowered their friend down. And that's what you have to find, people. Some crazy faith, faithful, loyal friends who aren't going to let you drown. For sure. I think um, the people need to understand that you can heal. Um, There's a lot of I would say mostly in the, on the me- medical therapeutic side that might not have the faith for really complex, really deep stuff. Okay. And that's one of the realities that we have to understand because you do need a therapist who understands brain, the, the brain neurology and all of that. I, I do encourage that. Um, so so you the faith element is really critical because you will need uh, the gift of working in miracles for really messed up the really deep and I I can speak from experience like I I'm like an impossible case you know you put it up on paper you, you know you line it up against um, all of the the textbook cases I should be absolutely insane and walking the streets and talking to myself you know what I'm saying and and so that is not my story. But also we have the faith element and the faith that God really truly does heal and somehow, some way he will do it and he will give me a word um, in my stuck places and he will walk me out. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Okay, so so um, that faith element is critical, really, really critical. And knowing that um, uh, you, you know, what beat others is not going to beat you and, and really believing that. How does someone not really get tore down and feel like victimized and defeated in this process? How do they stay kind of level? Because I really feel like victimization and defeatist mentalities are attacking people because they're like, I've tried to get healed. I've tried to get deliverance and it hasn't worked. How do they stay up to a level that they can really walk out this process? Well, a lot of it's how you measure your progress, you know, okay, you need to look over a year, look over a couple of years. Have I made progress? Okay. And, um, you know, when you have stories like mine, uh, all the scenes, all the memories, okay, are you ever, ever going to get through all of that? I mean, that's going to take your whole life. All right. So you get to the point where you're like, you're, you're at peace. Um, you're at peace with the progress rather than expecting yourself to have every little thing dealt with and undone and everything, you know, for, for a lot of people, that's not going to be possible. You have to just take it day by day and okay, what am I working on, you know, this year? 
Okay. Because some of those scenes, they take you a year or two or three to actually get through them. And so we just, we just point ourselves in the right direction. And, you know, little by little, you start to feel relief. You know, you start to notice the change. You start to notice your relationships are changing. Wow. Things that used to bother me at a, at a 10 level only bother me at a four level now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I can sleep at night. You know, I mean, very significant things like that. And so that's how we measure our progress. And inner healing and deliverance, they go hand in hand. I think people want the deliverance Mm -hmm. process because it's quick. Oh, just cast my demons out of me and let me be on my way. But I say you can't have inner healing without deliverance. You can't have deliverance without inner healing. They're both together. What do you say about inner healing and deliverance? Well, inner healing is, is the, it's, it's the belief structure it's the part of you that's damaged that the Lord has to heal because Satan doesn't play fair. And anytime you believe a lie, you know, and that lie came from somewhere. Sometimes we don't even know the lies that we believe and we're living it out. But anytime there's an open door and the open door is the lie, Satan comes in mm-hmm. to oppress, to afflict whatever he can do. And, and so we have to go through inner healing. What, why is that demon there? Okay. We have to really ask that question. We have to, we have to probe. Um, why am I, why, why do I have rage fits? Why do I, um, you know, why do I, uh, spin out and melt down, you know, every, every October. Okay. You know, yeah. like, why do these things, why do these things happen? Well, there's a reason, you know, it's demonic, but there's a reason. So we got to find out what's the reason. And then we got to tackle that. And she talks about, you know, keep looking for hidden roots in her book. You know, mm-hmm. how do we look for that? Because we got to find what our triggers are. You know, I wrote mm-hmm. my book, you know, Mind Battles, Root Out Mental Triggers to Release Peace. You got to like, what is my trigger? And I think, Jennifer, that's where people aren't going deep enough to really, you know, take. We just want to like have this supernatural deliverance, supernatural process, and we want to rush through it. And and I tell people, you know, I said, you could be working on one thing for two years. You know, yeah. you've had it for four. You know, and so it's not always going to go away in two days. Yeah, no, it, it's not. Uh, I think that was something that I finally just, I just reconciled that you, I am going to uh, take a long time with uh, the, the measure of stuff that I have had to deal with. And you know, um, like I've been working on this one thing for about three years straight, but it's just so deep, you know, and I'm like, okay. And then, um, I have other things shouting at me to, you know, calling my attention, but I'm like, get in line because I'm still working on this. (laughs) That is, that is so true. And friends, so like some of you may be saying, where do I start? you know, if you know that you have 10 things. And so what I've done in the past is I'll tell people, you know, maybe write those 10 things down and then take that to prayer and say, Holy Spirit, where do you want me to start? Mm -hmm. Uh, Another way is what's really consuming your mind? You know, what's raging through that at the greatest level? Well, don't think that's my largest thing. I'm going to shelf that and do that last. Oftentimes that's thing that's highlighted to do first, you know, Mm -hmm. what's consuming your thoughts. And also sometimes it's what's in the now. I know I've helped a lot of people on the inner healing and deliverance process. And, you know, you think you're going to come into a session and do this today, but then, you know, something reared its ugly head and needs to be dealt with. So, you know, (laughs) what plan do you give them, Jennifer? What do you suggest to them to dig and root all this out? I, I really suggest partnering with the Holy Spirit. What is he calling to your attention? What is what is in the way of you living, living, um, you know, at peace right now? Um, what's shouting in your face? So I think we're on the same page with that. Yeah. And you have written tons of books. Yes. How is this one really going to impact their life over all the books? Why? Like, it sounds like this is really a personal project. Do you think they're going to really come into alignment with this is personal, this is real, this is, you know, you got prayer books, prophecy books, you have books on every subject. 
what is going to stand out and be like, oh, I might not have bought Jennifer's other books, but I got to have this one. Well, it again, it was, uh, you know, I wasn't planning on writing it the way that I did. It, it was really triggered by one of those memories that came back to me when I when I started to remember that I was holed up in some sort of uh, house or mansion or something. And this is when I was a teenager and it was um, a ritual abuse house. It was, it was prostitution. It was ritual abuse and it was high end. It was paid. It was these kind of things. And I remember, I didn't remember these things until, you know, my memory started coming back, but there was, um, there was a, a guy in there that was a friend of mine and I had known him from somewhere. I can't remember, but he was protecting me. And um, he was protecting me from the worst of it, the worst of what was coming to the door. And um, just long story short, he got caught. He got executed for that. Um, and when I remembered that, that's why I wrote the book the way that I did. And I started putting reality of my story in there and, you know, um, uh, and what it was like to walk through this thing, recognizing that so many people, they have no clue how to walk through um, even, you know, rough things, you know, but anything on that level, I said, I want to, I want to give people hope that you can walk through the worst of the worst. You can have a good life. You can keep your marriage. You can keep your kids. You can, you know, you can still be in ministry on this level and you can still work out, work out things at the same time. That is great. And if you guys don't follow Jennifer, you should because she is a hope giver. But I want to read you some of these titles because when I got a hold of this book, like seriously, I went to my team and I'm like, you need this book. And so even you guys know everything I know. I was like, this, this book, this has things in it that you need. And I looked at this and I loved some of this. Hearts of stone, mm -hmm. dead hearts really do come back to life when you hate someone. I haven't seen those topics in another inner healing and deliverance book ever. And so right. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, these, <laughs> these are really needed, Jennifer. I mean, yeah. And then trauma, we've heard some about trauma, but yeah. then when I was reading the Jezebel, I loved this because you sentimented, you know, what I say, not everyone's a Jezebel. We've distorted that, you know, terminology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have. Um, shame. There's not a book on shame. I don't even think many people even put shame in there. And really so much is related to shame. And yeah. then defeating the spirit of fear. I mean, yeah. wow. Tell us, you know, a lot of my listeners are, you know, afraid. They're in that spirit of fear. Oh, yeah. Not related to shame, not related to a sexual abuse, but just in general. What would be three of the top keys that you would give someone to be released from that spirit of fear that really plagues and torments them? Yeah, I mean, the the level of fear that people deal with, I mean, it is, I mean, it's almost like they're in this walking horror movie. I mean, the, the, the intensity and the anxiety that they're they're dealing with, you know, and I hear these stories of how deep that it goes. Okay. And so, um, not to be cliche, not to put a, a pat answer on something, but your only solution is the word of God, mm -hmm. you know, and, and really taking the word of God, like a sword and eating the word of God, like it is medicine. Um, you know, and, and then keeping yourself in the anointing, you know, whether, whether that's a good church service, your personal prayer time, um, you know, a, a good conference, but keeping yourself in the anointing because it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. So because fear is a spirit, I mean, it is definitely a spirit. God's not given to us a spirit of fear, power, love, and sound mind, especially those that like, you can't even go get out of your house. I mean, like, you know, mm -hmm. you can't sleep at night, um, you know, or you get triggered and you lose days, you know, to, to fear. Okay. So, so you're going to have to deal with it on a spiritual, 
spiritual level for sure. Um, and, and you're going to have to attack it that way. I know we can numb ourselves with medication. I know we can, you know, that there's those options. And for some people, it's a, it's a bit of a stopgap form, but it is not your answer. You've actually got to defeat it. And so the word of God is your way through. The anointing is your way out. I totally agree. God told me years ago, he said, Kathy, if your mind is so full of my word, there'll be no room for fear. That's right. And, you know, and I didn't, honestly, I didn't get it as full as I should have, as fast as I should have. And, you know, I would, I would hear the Holy Spirit convicting me. The devil's going to eat you alive. The devil's going to eat you alive, you know, and you just got (laughs) to constantly go into the word. I love how you said, you know, we got to, we got to eat it. We got to devour it and have it be, have it be your medicine guys. You know, it's better than medicine. And, and that's what we have to do is really just um, devour that and keep us, you know, keep ourselves focused on the word and, as we do that, and as we speak that out, we're going to receive healing just in that, you know, the word heals, the word yeah, delivers. And, and that is so true. Jennifer, in our closing, what would you want to tell our friends? What else do you want to impart to them on the value of inner healing and deliverance? Well, you know, whatever you don't deal with, it's going to deal with you. So Mm. you need to deal with your stuff. There is a timing for it. Um, You know, and then also be bold with that book. I passed that book out. People, people pass this book out. I had a Mm -hmm. a woman, she was a Satanist. She came to my door. Actually, she was dropping off groceries. So Satanists have a job too. And (laughs) uh, so, um, so anyway, um, you know, and I just said, hold up. I said, you're wearing tattoos. And I said, so I know what you're involved with. And I've come out of that. I said, I've got a book for you. And I just handed her the book, you know, and you know, you just got to be bold with, with it. Cause that book is not just for you. It's for people that, you know, uh, people that you don't know how to help. <laughs> you know, that book will help. <laughs> I love that boldness. And friends, what I'm starting to tell people is, you know, when you go and visit someone, cause they're like, Hey, will you pray for me? Maybe you're in the hospital. They're in the hospital. Maybe you're going, you know, to, um, drop a cake off at someone that, you know, isn't feeling good or something. Stop yeah. bringing people flowers and bring up the book, you know? Yeah. You're spending what, 20, 40, $50 on flowers. You can spend less than that on a book. And yeah. the, this, you know, isn't going to die like the flowers. This is going to create life. And, yeah. you know, I've been really passionate about this lately, friends. You know, some of you are like, well, I don't have that money. I don't want to spend it. You know what? You spend money on something. Spend yeah. money on yeah. something that's going to so a seed. I I love that. I've never thought about giving it to a Satanist or a witch, but that's a good idea. I can talk the language. I I can totally talk the language and just, you know, get right in there. (laughs) It's a great intro. It, It definitely is. Jennifer, tell our listeners where they can find you. Okay. I'm at jenniferevaz.com. I'm also on social media, either under the handle, uh, Jennifer Evaz or praying prophet. Awesome. And guys, she has some great uh, Facebook posts of just like little nuggets to just really ignite you in praying and the prophetic. Uh, She's a real deal, guys. Very respected leader. I want to encourage you to get the book, follow her. It's going to be worth it. And your healing and deliverance is going to manifest. Jennifer, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. Guys, have a great day. Until next time, press through to your breakthrough. Thank you for listening to the Prophetic Spiritual Warfare Podcast. Receive additional teaching through Kathy's Web Church Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube and Facebook or through her Prophetic Spiritual Warfare book. I invite you to visit kathydegrawministries.org for books, mentoring, blogs, or to invite Kathy to speak at your event. Follow Kathy on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram at Kathy DeGraw. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, rate, and review the show. This helps our show rise in the rankings and reach more people to bring forth deliverance.